Scholars have long speculated what it takes to achieve peak physical brawn. Long have we yearned for our champion, but until this moment, no human has been deemed worthy. Throughout history, heroes have climbed the mountain. Names like Leonidas, Robinson, Williams. But today, a new hero is born. Forged in hardship and raised in squalor, this man will attempt what no man has done before. Run a few miles without losing his breath. Tis a noble task, for until this moment the competition has been a wasteland. Fortunately, one man has what it takes to be the very best, like no one ever was. His children will hear of this day, the day that fitness became synonymous with his greatness. Generations will praise him as history will never know a finer physical specimen because on this day... Wait, how far have I gotten? <sighs> okay, I'll admit it, this example was a tad melodramatic, but I'm sure that you've been through something similar or at the very least you know someone that has gone through something like this. We are, after all, well into the new year. How are your New Year's resolutions coming along? Hi, my name is Ben Hillman, and this is some Slacker stuff. I'm searching for meaning in digital awareness. In this video, I want to tell you about my favorite tip for fitness. Just show up. So at the beginning of this year, I decided to focus on my fitness. Now, you all know how I feel about New Year's resolutions, and if you don't, click in the corner and watch that video. But I know that I'm not the only one that can falter when it comes to setting these goals. According to psychology professor John C. Norcross, 40% of Americans set resolutions around January 1st, and only 40 to 40% of those that set resolutions will be successful at six months. So it sounds like the odds are stacked against me there. And seeing as failing is so likely, what are some of the reasons that people give up? I interviewed my friend Michelle Spears, who has been a fitness trainer, nutritionist, and health coach for 30 years. She had this to say about some of the more common excuses she's heard. A really good one is, I don't have time. And another good one is, I don't have enough money. I don't have the money for that. Um, another one is, you know, well, legitimately sometimes people are injured. You know, they go out full 100% and then they get injured because they've not understood that the body needs time to adapt to whatever the, you know, the, the workout is of their choice. So the, those are the pretty common ones, mm -hmm. you know, really time, money. Um, oh, I'm tired. So people also don't understand how to plan their workouts in their days and in their weeks. And people get tired. You know, you're working or you have families or you have other things on your schedule. And then people don't realize that you know, you've got to schedule in that workout time and um, have the energy for that. So I think that setting specific fitness goals, even when you might be familiar with working out already, can be intimidating. Lift weights might seem simple enough, but how much weight are we talking about here? Which weights? And where does one find weights to lift anyhow? But hey, don't panic. Pick a specific goal and stick with it for a bit. Try something out, and if it doesn't work, pivot to something else. There are a plethora of options out there. The what doesn't really matter in this case, it's the consistency that you want to look for. Just start somewhere. Now I know that you might think to yourself, what if I skip a day? What if I can't keep doing it? What if I injure myself? What if I have to start over? And then the what ifs become what nows, which if you're not careful can become whatevers. I found that putting these expectations on a pedestal can be imposing. So how should I contextualize this? Well, just show up is just exposure therapy. The more involved you become with an object or a place, the more comfortable you can feel. Just make the promise to yourself to go to the place where you want to work on your goals. This promise should be tantamount to your goals to lift more and weigh less. Just show up and be present where the work happens. So back when I was setting out on this endeavor, I made an agreement with myself. I would just go to the gym no matter how I was feeling. When I got there, if I didn't finish my set, that was okay. 
If I just walked on the treadmill for 20 minutes, that was okay too. But more often than not, I completed my planned workout. The times that I didn't finish, I knew that I would give it another try the next day. And of course there were days that I missed, but that didn't mean that I had failed. I didn't put the pressure on myself to execute at peak levels either. I just put the expectation on myself to be there and to do what I could. Pushing myself out of my comfort zone, but not so far as to feel miserable. If none of this is doing it for you, then you should check out SMART goals. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Specific meaning your goal is clear and descriptive. Measurable meaning that your goal is quantifiable so that you can track your progress and see results. Achievable meaning it is realistic, attainable, and something that stretches your abilities, but it is still possible to finish. Relevant meaning that this goal is something that matters to you and is worthwhile. And last, time-bound. Does your goal have an end date or is it just left indefinitely? It should be the former. SMART goals can be applied to short-term or long-term ambitions, and I put an article in the description that goes a little bit deeper on it. So what if we apply SMART goals to just show up? It looks something like this. I want to show up to the gym four days a week for four weeks. It's specific because I'm being clear about just showing up to the gym. It's measurable because I have quantified it. It's achievable because all I have to do is walk there. It's relevant because it's working towards a healthy habit that I want. And it is time bound because I'm only committing to it for one month. I love that. I love that. And, and that is such a great approach because you're right. So many people have these expectations or even me like, okay, I'm going to go for a run, but shoot, if I don't go for five miles or if I don't run the whole way, or if I don't, then what's the point? But that's not the point. The, the point is to create that habit. And the only way you're going to create that habit and make that a part of your everyday life or your weekly life is to just go do it. So by having no expectations and just going and doing, you'll find first of all that, okay, I'm here. I might as well lift that weight or I'll just go for that walk or I'll do that run or whatever. And pretty soon you're like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's not that bad. And you actually get something out of it physically. And then clearly the mental part of it, okay, I feel successful because ABC, I checked those off my list. So like, it's not just the physical aspect of exercise and the longevity and the health and it's, you know, physical health. It's, it's about also mental health. It's about mental wellness. I mean, there's so many studies, you know, I'm, I'm looking at those all the time about how physical activity can improve your well-being, sense of well-being, and there are studies that have shown that you know mild to moderate depression and anxiety can be alleviated better than drugs by exercise. And it doesn't have to be super intense. It doesn't have to be every day, but but having some kind of rhythm and some kind of commitment to that can change somebody's life. So this strategy has helped me loads. I am also 100% sure that it will not transform your health instantaneously. I don't have the qualifications to tell you one way or the other. All I have is my personal experience. Making big dramatic changes doesn't happen with just a tip review. It's a series of choices that culminate in gradual growth. If you're considering a drastic change to your physical health or your mental health, please consult your doctor as well as do your own research. So please let me know in the comments down below what techniques that you use to develop healthy habits. Are you a fan of New Year's resolutions? Are you still sticking with it? And as always, I want this to be a discussion, not a lecture. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all my new uploads and contribute to my Patreon where I give a more in-depth look into my videos as well as access to more content than I offer on YouTube. And with that, I will be here next time.